Break out the slow cooker because I'm putting this baby to use in some of the most surprising ways. The slow cooker just lends itself to easy, budget-friendly recipes. And I'm starting today with one of the greatest things ever, slow cooker ribs. The prep time is about like five minutes. You've got time for that. I'm starting with two racks of spare ribs. And what I love about this recipe is that we are going to go ahead and cut them into serving size portions. People are gonna be able to grab their rib straight from the crock pot. That's what I'm talking about. Just find the space in between the two ribs and slide your knife right down. This might be the hardest part of the recipe and it is not hard, but even if this is something you don't wanna do, have the butcher do it. They're not gonna charge you any more just to cut them into portions for you. Now for the sauce, I'm gonna start with ketchup, brown sugar, vinegar, honey, soy sauce to balance out the sweet, ginger, dried mustard, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and I'm adding a little bit of crushed red pepper because I like a little spicy sweet in my barbecue sauce. How easy is this? It's basically two ingredients. You've got your ribs and you've got your sauce, and if you don't even wanna do this step, pick up a bottle of sauce and pour it in. I've got a lot of sweet going on in my barbecue sauce, and when you cook that, it's gonna get sticky. Pro tip, break out the slow cooker liners. This is really gonna make your cleanup a breeze, especially if you're having a party. At the end, all you have to do is pull this out. Locked and loaded, in with the ribs. Sauce goes right over the top. It does not get any easier than this recipe right here. These cook on high for five hours, or if you wanted to do this before you went to work for the day, you could just turn it on low till the end of the work day. It's party time and the ribs are ready. Look at that. You might argue that these are not grilled or smoked, so they're gonna be missing something, but the barbecue sauce has its own little smokiness in there. I'm telling you, you're not gonna miss it. The time and effort you saved is worth every bite. Finger looking good. Have you ever made bread in your slow cooker? If not, today's the day. The slow cooker just kind of takes off the pressure of having to babysit your loaf of bread in the oven. So we're gonna make a simple dough. This is gonna rise overnight. So in the morning, all you do is pop it in your slow cooker and you've got freshly baked bread and your house is going to smell so good. I'm starting with some bread flour. To that, I'm adding some salt and a half a teaspoon of yeast, give that a whisk, and then one and a third cup of warm water. Just mix it up and it's just that easy. Don't be afraid to get in there. Your hand can help pull it all together. We're gonna leave this set on a kitchen towel overnight and watch what happens. And just like magic, I've got the risen dough. I'm gonna sprinkle my surface with some flour the dough is gonna be sticky, but the flour on the surface is gonna help it come together. Just work it several times, just kind of stretching and kneading it. You don't have to do this for too long. Then we're gonna form it into a round loaf. Then we're just gonna put it in our slow cooker. It's gonna take about two hours. Before you bake your bread in your slow cooker, you wanna line it with some parchment paper. That's gonna keep it from sticking. This is just a stickier bread dough. I'm gonna cover it and cook it on high no peaking for two hours. Bada boom, bada bread. You might be like, I wish it was more golden brown until you flip it over and it's perfect. Listen. <gasps> That's what we like. Slice into it. <laughs> Hot, steamy slice of bread. Tender and moist on the inside, crispy on the outside. Perfect bite of bread. Mm. Who knew you could make bread this good in the crock pot? This next one might surprise you like it did me. I just thought this was kind of genius. You can make baked potatoes in your slow cooker. I think it's a fun party idea. You're just gonna prep your potatoes just like you would if they were going in the oven. I'm gonna pierce them a couple times, give them a little Rub with some olive oil and sprinkle with salt. And then you just place them in your slow cooker on high for about four and a half hours. I just love this. And I know what my family's having for dinner tonight. It's tater time. It's like there's nothing to it. Hot and steamy. 
This is a great idea to do for a baked potato bar. Fluff it with a fork, get all the good stuff, little pat of butter. This might take a minute, but the simplest things really are the best. Trust me. This next recipe is the solution to your holidays this year. We are making a ham in the slow cooker with only one other ingredient. Y'all, it does not get any easier than this. And a benefit to using your slow cooker to cook your ham is your oven space is free for all your sides. I'm starting with a cured ham, so it's got that salty aspect going on. And all you need to add is the brown sugar for a little salty sweet. This again is a great time to break out the liners. We're gonna put about half or so of our sugar down at the bottom of our slow cooker, and then we're gonna put the rest over the top. So the glaze will be kind of forming and cooking in the bottom. By placing the cut side down on top of the sugar, that glaze is kind of crusting up along the outside. This is just gonna go on high for about four hours, or if you want the all day slow cooking effect, low for eight. Gives me plenty of time to cook the rest. The house is smelling good with this ham. Just before it's done, I like to take some of the glaze, kind of baste it over the top, and it's ready. Let me get it ready for its debut. I'm sort of in shock that this actually came out of a crock pot with like one additional ingredient. Spin over some of that glaze. We'll sample for the, for the chef. Dang. That is tender. This is good, y'all. You gotta try it. Let's not forget the other great thing about this recipe. Clean up some breeze. This next slow cooker surprise is caramelized onions. This is one of the cheapest, most genius ways to elevate lots and lots of dishes. My favorite thing to do with caramelized onions is to add them to grilled cheeses or a panini. Something about that kind of crusty bread. Maybe a little cheese and gooeyness mixed with a caramelized onion. Mm. We'll take about half a stick of butter and melt it. We're gonna pour half down in our slow cooker and toss our onions with the other half and a little salt. This is literally the easiest way to make caramelized onions. We're gonna cook this on high for about five hours or low for 10 hours. And then I might even turn it into something special. Stay tuned. That's a lot of flavor going on in there. I personally like to stop here when they're not fully developed and mushy. There's still plenty of texture, but it's got that nice sweetness from the browning. The longer you cook these, the more richly brown they're gonna get. So if you want that deep, rich, caramelized onion, let it go. You could stop here, like I said, and just keep these on hand for later in the week, or you can turn this right now into French onion soup. To do that, I'm gonna stir in some sherry, a little fresh thyme, and some beef broth. Season it with a little salt and pepper, cover it and let it go at least another half hour to an hour, and soup's ready. It really is hard to believe that all of this came out of one appliance. I hope you'll give at least one of these recipes a try. I promise you, it'll be worth your while. And when you do, tag me and let me know. I'd love to see what you're cooking. When it comes to surprising, comforting classics in your slow cooker, you can cook that.